mind if I help myself to another coffee? Oh, go ahead. Don't know why. I'm a wash with the stuff. The Archers is the world's longest running radio show with more than 15,000 episodes broadcast. Despite being a rural flavour show, The Archers is recorded in the heart of the UK's second largest city, Birmingham. Country Channel TV was invited to a behind the scenes look at one of Britain's favourite institutions. For show editor Vanessa Whitburn, it's been an interesting journey to get to the top. Started with uh, radio, as a radio drama producer. I mean, I did a lot of t um, theatre um, stuff at university and, and did some theatre work before I joined the BBC and then came uh, as a studio manager, which is a, an odd title for a technician, really, that, that they train you in, you know, or did in those days in microphones and how to put everything up. And I worked on radio drama as a spot SM and then really sort of progressed up through, but always wanted to be a producer of drama eventually knocked on the door to the extent that they couldn't say no, so became a producer of uh, radio drama. Um, spent a while directing The Archers as part of the team under William Smethurst, who was the editor at the time. Um, went off to produce Brookside for Channel 4, did some TV, worked back at Pebble Mill in TV. And then the editorship of the programme came up. It's a programme I love, lived with since the age of about 11, my grandparents listened to it regularly and therefore I was kind of force fed it um, by going to lunch with them and they would put this on and I'd have to be quiet and so you know, obviously I heard it and that was fun uh, and so when the editorship of the program came up I thought great you know um, go for it so I did and got it and been here since 1991 amazingly. Okay that's fine. Uh, but the important thing about the scene is Caroline coming up with the miraculous solution to the problem that we've been <sighs> Going Thank through for years and years and years. Dear me, yes. I mean, it's all fallen to bits when we've been yeah, away. I know, I know. My job is to run the script meeting, which which meets monthly with about 10 writers and some of the production team. So I run a meeting of about 15 to 16 people. Um, we choreograph the storylines. I suppose, although we get storylines from everybody and all kinds of um, influences, um, in the end, I structure the storylines, decide what should happen and what shouldn't conduct it really uh, and then um, script edit um, occasionally I get in the studio to direct so one of the lovely things about radio is that the producers and editors do actually do the whole thing unlike TV and uh, theatre so that's great um, but um, really just have an overview of the whole the whole show okay shall we rehearse yep and uh, I'll stay in here Michael okay Cup of tea, Mike. Oh, tar, Caroline. Oh, that's most vocal. There you go. Mm. Mm. Oh. I'll put Ed's down here, shall I? Yeah, OK, yeah. Uh, uh, he's with the last one now. Uh, uh, then we'll uh, sit to him and wash down the bale. How's Hayley? Oh, uh, fine, physically. Good. Still dead upset over losing one McGreen. Oh, yeah. I came into the programme in 1973 and uh, I've played Mike ever since. I've sort of been... Mike Tucker, man and boy, as it were. As it were. How are things between the boys? I haven't liked to ask them. Uh, I'm not good. <laughs> They're avoiding each other, I reckon. They're supposed to be mates. Oh dear. I mean, Hayley so wanted to be in their own place when their baby came. It's uh, due in two months. Uh, not much chance of that now. No. I mean, it would have been a stretch for them financially, mine, but. Oh, I just wish there was something practical I could do to help them, Caroline. I, mean, I think the archers has had this immense popularity over the years, um, basically because it has always very accurately reflected the reality of life and living in a rural community at whatever decade it happens to be in. You know, you get people say, oh, it's all got a bit spicy now, hasn't it? You know, you say, hang on a minute, you know. Um, Jennifer Aldridge had an illegitimate child back in the 60s, you know. That was pretty spicy then. You know, it's always kept up with current trends of what's happening. And they've very accurately fed in things that are happening in the farming community and also, as I say, the realities of, of a village life uh, in, in whatever decade we're in. You could divide the house up any way you like. Roy and Haley in one half and you in the other. Why not? I never thought. Caroline, you're a flaming genius. 
Vanessa Whitburn came to see a play I was doing. I was playing Lady Macbeth at a theatre in Southampton. She saw the play, liked me apparently, and offered me a job on the Archers, and I turned it down because I said I didn't want to be in a soap opera about sheep. Um, and she ran me up at home very sweetly and decided that uh, she would try and get me to do the programme. So she made me three promises. She said, first, we promised that um, you'll have fun. That was great. Next, we promised that the money is better than you think it is because you get instant repeats on it, and that was great. Third, she said, I absolutely promise it's a total maximum of three months' work, which was a complete lie because that was something like 1979. <laughs> I grew up listening to the Archers unwillingly because my grandmother lived with us in the last years of her life and was addicted to the archers and the morning service. And she had them both on very, very loud because she was deaf. And the children in the house just loathed that music. She had the archers in the evening, the repeat the next day, and the omnibus. So I was forced into the archers when I was a child. And look, it's come back to bite me later on. Yeah. I'm Kate Oates, I'm one of the producers of The Archers, and this around me here is Ambridge. Um, so this is where we shatter everybody's illusions. Um, the studio is actually uh, set into three sections, and where we perform a scene, where the actors act the scene, is dependent on where the scene is set in Ambridge. So for example, this area that we're in here at the moment is called the live area. Um, you can see uh, the floor, uh, wooden floor and the treatment on the walls here. That basically creates a very sort of echoey acoustic. So if we have a scene that's set in a milking parlour, say, a church hall, um, a leisure centre, for example, this is the kind of place that we're going to use. And um, you can see that we've kind of got all sorts of bits and pieces around us here, really. The screens that we've got here can be wheeled to make a smaller, more enclosed area. For example, if a scene's set in a stable block, um, you know, we can use this and, and get that kind of closer sound. So basically, everything that you see around you here, the doors that we can wheel around, you know, the different mics and so on, all create that kind of different atmosphere. I'll take you through into the soft area via the doorbells. Uh, everyone in Ambridge's doorbell here, we've got the stables. Um, I think the Blossom Hill Cottage is on here somewhere. So uh, yes, we, we have to remember whose everybody's is because we have a very dedicated listenership who, who know the difference between uh, the lodger's doorbell and home farm. So we keep on our toes. This is the soft area. Uh, the soft area is basically where we set any kind of domestic scene. Um, so anything that is in a softly furnished area like a living room, a kitchen, the bull, uh, all of that kind of stuff happens in here. Um, and as you can see, we kind of have, again, the screens which can set up any sort of domestic layout really. And that gives us a great sort of asset in terms of mobility. Um, we can have Shula, for example, uh, in uh, the kitchen making a cup of tea. We can be in there with her and then we can follow her through as she walks into the living room and throws it all over Alistair in a fit of pique. Um, so I shall take you through into the kitchen. This is an extension of the soft area. Um, and I mean basically everything that you see around you is, is everything that we need to create that sort of very domestic environment. Uh, we've got the Brookfield Arga there, um, you know, things like, you know, just things like, you know, the sink, the, you know, the regular cooker, all that sort of thing. And our spot effects person, who at the moment is uh, called Howell, um, I mean he uh, will, part of his job is to be in this environment and making those sounds, basically, you know, <coughs> rattling the teacups, doing the washing up, you know, that kind of thing to create that sort of atmosphere and that kind of, you know, very domestic setting. So, what are you doing now? Uh, just getting ready for the next um, episode. And just moving uh, mics around again. So, what do you do? I uh, do uh, the spot effects on the arches. Uh, just, uh, any are you what we call foley then? Uh, kind of, yep. First. Okay. And, and these, are, these are all part of the uh, paraphernalia of production? Uh, yep, that's uh, the ball bar. That's this one? Yep, that's... 